Responsiveness is one of those new things when it comes to website making. And when I started, it was something we didn't even look, we didn't care about it. And then there was this little group of elitists who kept proclaiming that the future is responsiveness. And turns out these guys are very, very right. Now, responsiveness, I'm going to show you first what it is. If you don't understand what it is, then we will talk about why it is important. And then three, I'm going to show you how to do it in Brizzy. You know, this is one of those seminars that you attend where they tell you what they're going to tell you and then they show you what they're going to tell you and then they reminded you what they told you. One of those. I'll use Microsoft Edge browser. You can use any other browser for this just to show you how you go about finding out about responsiveness. And I will look for any website. And this is where all my money and my free time goes to. Ooh, new product. Okay. What we quickly need to focus on is how this page looks. And I think, you know, when I look at this page today, I can already tell you, you may say, well, it's no, nothing exceptional. It's just a page and there are some banners there and there's some text. And then if I click on one of their products, then if we go in here, okay, that's also a very typical product. There's an image, a cart, etc. But what is important to understand here and this is what we talk about responsive. This is a desktop. This is a monitor on my desk at home. But we all know that a large group of people, especially the younger generations, mainly access websites on their phones. Can this image fit onto a iPhone X or a Samsung Galaxy or the new Sony Xperia Mark II? Can it? And the answer to that is absolutely it can, but you're basically going to see nothing. And that was the old HTML back in the 90s. If it were to go onto a smaller screen, it would be squashed because everything was static. And responsiveness, what we have now, allows you to take the site and move things around the moment you go to a tablet device or to a cell phone device. And that is to make it fit in better. In a way, you're essentially creating a second and a third version of your site. This is extremely important when you are creating a website because you have to keep that in mind. And your browser, like this one, Microsoft Edge, Google Chrome, Firefox, Safari, they all have a feature in which allows you to go and test it. It scares a lot of people because there's a lot of big code that pops up there as well which you really just ignore. But I would recommend that if you're serious about making responsive sites so that people on mobile devices can also access it, that you do this and get in the habit. And the habit is more important because even for me, who's been doing it for a long time, there are moments you just completely forget about it. It all starts with a shortcut key on your keyboard, F12. And that is the, the number keypads you see at the top of your keyboard, F1, F2, all the way to F12. I will go and I will press F12 on my keyboard, and this is what's going to happen then with my browser. It opens this area, which we often refer to as the inspector. And actually, as you deep dive more into website making, you will find that there are actually areas here that are very interesting. I use this often when I want to find out which font was used on the site when I'm trying to copy what they've been doing. But what we are interested in is how to get to the responsive views. So they have these presets and it will show you tablets and it will show you mobile devices. At the top, and it may differ from browser to browser, you're going to see something like this. You see there's a monitor and there's a little cell phone there, this is where you're going to switch on those presets that you can view. Click on it and it takes you into that view. Forget about this area quickly, just have a look up here. It says responsive. This means that now your content adjusts according to the display you are on. And they have presets and this is where you usually go to. You start with the presets and the two that you would look for is usually something very popular. In this case, you have Google Pixel and you have iPhone X. I like the Samsung Galaxy because their aspect ratio is a little bit smaller and I wish these guys would update it, just bring in some new stuff, especially now that we have the 
an amorphic display almost from the new Sony Xperia Mark II. But in this case, I usually go to for the iPhone X. So I click here and you will see a slight adjustment happen. And you can see it's 375 pixels in width by 812 pixels in height. This is how it works. And you'll also see my cursor turns to this little dot. That simulates your finger as you would move through this page. And that's what you do here. Now, have you observed what has happened? And that is that these things that were adjacent, you had the image on the left, then you had the title and the heading, the price there and the description, and these three buttons were also next to each other. In responsive view for the cell phone, they are stacked. They are on top of each other. And you can go back here, let's detoggle it to see how it looked, right? That there is responsive. Your website maker like Brizzy or any other isn't smart enough to do this by itself. You need to go and tell it how to do that. And that is what we mean by responsive design. It's an additional step and actually many steps that you have to take to make sure that your site looks good on mobile devices. Also, you have to check for tablet. So let's go to iPad. This is also the go-to. And what you see here, what they've done with iPad, is they've basically kept the desktop display and they said, hmm, we think it looks okay on the iPad. There's a few more features here that you can test out. And that is that currently we are in portrait mode. And portrait mode means, you know, how you would hold a book. If you want to turn the book sideways, which is how we often do with phones, and with tablets, that's landscape mode. And that you can do up here. Click on rotate and you will see how it will look. Again, nothing will change for our tablet. Let's go back to iPhone X and you will see iPhone X, if we rotate it, it takes on the desktop view. And that is what it's all about when it comes to these responsive views. And you can simply untoggle it or detoggle it over here. And if you want to exit this inspector, you can click on the X here or just simply hit F12 on your keyboard again. And that is responsive view. If you were to go onto the internet and you would look at how to design for mobile, is it important? Should you do it? You will find many sources telling you, you need to focus on mobile. You need to design for mobile. They will also all tell you that nowadays, 60% plus of websites are accessed on mobile. That means that a great number of people are going to interact with your website first on mobile. And for me, even though I still prefer the desktop, I do have to admit is when someone forwards me a link on WhatsApp or Facebook and I'm on my phone, that's where I will quickly first look at the mobile. If I need to buy something online or, you know, send a form, I'll still probably come home. I'm just old school. I'll still come home. I'm sitting in front of the PC and do it from my desktop. But my first interaction will be with your site through a mobile, most probably. And that means you need to make a good impression on mobile. And you, like I said, you can go ahead and you will find so, so, so many websites telling you, this is the data, this is what Google does, etc., etc. The other reason is that Google has recently, which is our biggest search engine for people when they are looking for things on the internet, decided to test your site. And if your site doesn't look good for mobile, it ranks it lower. And that's why it's also very important to go for mobile designs. Now we've learned what, remember I told you I'm going to repeat this, We've learned what is responsiveness, and that is that you have different display versions for different devices from mobile, tablet, to desktop. And actually, depending on the page builder, you can have more. You can add as many as you want, but in most cases, you're going to get those three. What we've also learned is that, yep, people are accessing websites on cell phones. When you are designing, you have to have two designs in mind. You have to look at your mobile device and you also have to look at the desktop. And there's a word on this site 
and let me close out there, says mobile first. Now, what mobile first means is before you start designing your site that we usually do for websites on desktop, think how you want to have it look on a mobile device. The previous site I had shown you is a very good example of how design has become more minimalistic, more simple, and just much more practical to ensure that users on mobile can interact better. And usually mobile design is a stacked design. Instead of putting things next to each other in various tables and columns and cells, in mobile device, we just put them all on top of each other. That's a very common approach in mobile. And if you understand that, you can't go wrong. There's a few other things in mobile, but we'll talk a lot about that as we work with the different elements here in Brizzy, such as be careful of animations, be careful of shape dividers and things like that, because they just crowd your site. Now, the last part is, let's look at where we're going to get responsiveness controls within Brizzy. It was such a long interlude, finally we are here. If you had followed along in the Brizzy Primer video, you have a good idea of what's going on here. What we're going to do is just bring in a pre-made block to see how it affects on different displays. Start building your page, click here, and we select one of these pre-made blocks. Let's grab something that has columns so we can see how that will work. Let's choose this one here and hope I don't burn my fingers with what I have selected. Clicking on any element will give you their options toolbar. And with this one, which is a text element, you can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten to choose from. Remember this, travel gear and fashion, we have 10 to choose from. The second thing, when I click here on T for topography, we are going to see that the size of this font is 67. So remember 10 items in the toolbar and a size of 67. Let's talk about the responsiveness within Brizzy. To access that, you go to the sidebar on the left and you will see this little screen. And as you hover over it, it gives you that tooltip, mobile view. Click and you have three options, tablet and mobile. Let's jump just quickly to mobile so you can see what's going to happen with this design. This is a pre-made design by Brizzy, so they have already designed it for mobile. There are a number of things that have happened here. First of all, you've seen what I've mentioned about stacking. That image that was on the right is now on top and everything here is stacked below it. You can go back to desktop over here, and you can see it very different. We have this green shape here on the left. We have all this space, and the text is much bigger. Remember, click T67, and when we go to mobile, they are stacked. Very, very different. In this video, though, I'm not going to show you how to create a responsive layout. We cover responsiveness for each and every element to make sure that in those videos you have a good idea how to use them responsively. So don't worry if you don't fully understand, just understand through this video what responsiveness is, why it's important, and where to find it. To show you though what happens in this view of mobile responsiveness, let's then click on this heading that we have here, Travel Gear and Fashion. And remember, we had how many items in our toolbar? 10. When I click on it and the toolbar opens, we only have four. And in fact, we have a new one now that wasn't present in the one on desktop view. The reason for that is you can make changes to this element to make it appear better in mobile, but you only have some. The others are global settings, which means you cannot change it for mobile. But other things like the size of the text, if I click here on the T, it's 38, not 67. And that's what you can do between responsive displays. You have this control over changing things here. And when you go back to desktop, they are still the same. Those things, let's click again, bold, italics, link, duplicate, and color, when you go to your mobile, you see you cannot change that. 
And that is what the whole idea is behind responsiveness. You create your design in desktop, and then you go next to tablet, and you make changes to the sizes, and then you go to mobile. And then you can make changes to how it is stacked. Do you want it next to each other, or do you want it on top of each other? Anything you do within mobile will only relate to mobile. And then, if you go back to desktop, everything is still safe and sound the way you had created it for desktop. One important thing is that you cannot change content, content of your text or the image. So for example, if I go back to mobile and I click on the image and I try to delete it and I go back to desktop, it's also deleted. Your content cannot change. The only thing that can change are the settings that you can find to that specific element in the different responsive controls for your tablet and for mobile. If I go back to mobile and I'll just undo Control Command Z, put it back there. 